An engine so powerful it could have changed World War II. So advanced it made the legendary Merlin look weak. Yet most people have never heard of it. The Allison V3420, 24 cylinders, 3,000 horsepower when most engines barely hit 1,500, but it was deliberately buried and banned from reaching its potential. Tonight, the conspiracy behind aviation's greatest cover-up gets exposed. The Allison Legacy, more than just another engine company. Our story begins in Indianapolis, 1915, when James Allison founded what would become one of America's most innovative and controversial engine manufacturers. But this wasn't just another automotive company. By the 1930s, Allison Engineering had become the beating heart of American aviation power, supplying engines that would carry our fighters and bombers across the Pacific and into the heart of Nazi Germany. When General Motors acquired Allison in 1929, they inherited more than just a company. They inherited a legacy of engineering excellence that would soon face its greatest test. The V1710 had already proven itself as a reliable workhorse, powering the P38 Lightning and early P51 Mustangs. But as World War II escalated, our military leaders realized something terrifying. We were falling behind in the power game. The Germans had their massive BMW 801s, the British were perfecting their Merlin engines, and our enemies were developing aircraft that could outrun, outclimb, and outfight our best fighters. We needed something bigger, something more powerful, something that could dominate the skies and end this war once and for all. The birth of a monster, why the V3-420 had to exist. It's 1939, and our intelligence reports are painting a grim picture. The Luftwaffe is developing superfighters that will make our current aircraft obsolete. The Japanese are building bombers with ranges that could threaten our homeland, and our allies are desperately calling for aircraft that can turn the tide of this global conflict. The military's demand was simple, but seemingly impossible. We need an engine that produces over 2,500 horsepower, double what our current engines could deliver. They needed it fast, they needed it reliable, and they needed it powerful enough to drive aircraft that could dominate any battlefield. This is where our story takes its first dramatic turn. Instead of starting from scratch, Allison's engineers conceived something brilliantly audacious. What if we took two of our proven V1710 engines and combined them into a single, earth-shaking power plant? It sounds simple, but the engineering challenges were staggering. How do you synchronize two massive V12 engines? How do you manage the cooling, the weight, the vibration? The answer would become the V3420. But the path to get there would be filled with technical triumphs, political intrigue, and ultimately, a conspiracy that would bury this mechanical marvel forever. Engineering Marvel Inside the V3420 Monster When we first lay eyes on the technical specifications of the V3420, the numbers are absolutely staggering. This wasn't just an engine, it was a mechanical symphony of destruction. 24 cylinders arranged in four banks of six, creating a W configuration that looked more like a piece of industrial art than an aircraft engine. The displacement alone tells our story. 3,420 cubic inches of pure American engineering fury. To put that in perspective, most modern car engines displace less than 400 cubic inches. This monster was nearly nine times larger, and it was designed to spin at thousands of RPMs while producing power that defied belief. But here's where it gets really incredible. The V3420 was essentially two V1710 engines mounted one behind the other, connected through a complex gear reduction system. Each half of the engine could operate independently if needed, meaning our pilots had built-in redundancy that could literally save their lives. If one half failed, they could still limp home on the other 1,500 horsepower. The cooling system alone was a masterpiece of engineering. 
With dual coolant circuits, massive radiators, and precisely calculated airflow, the V3420 could maintain optimal temperatures even under the most extreme combat conditions. The supercharging system featured dual-stage, dual-speed superchargers that could deliver massive amounts of compressed air to those 24 hungry cylinders, and the power output. In its final configuration, the V3420 was producing over 3,000 horsepower, enough to propel aircraft faster than anything else in the sky. We're talking about power levels that wouldn't be seen again in aviation until the jet age. David vs. Goliath – How the V3420 Stacked Against the Competition To truly understand the revolutionary nature of the V3420, we need to compare it to the engines that were dominating the skies during World War II. The British Rolls-Royce Merlin, powering the legendary Spitfire and later P-51 Mustangs, was producing around 1,500 horsepower. Respectable, but only half of what our monster could deliver. The German BMW 801 radial engine, found in the formidable Focke-Wulf 190, topped out at about 1,700 horsepower. The massive American Wright R3530, which would power the B-29 Superfortress, could produce around 2,200 horsepower under optimal conditions. But even these giants paled in comparison to what Allison had created. What made the V3420 truly special wasn't just raw power. It was the sophistication of that power delivery. While radial engines like the R3350 were air-cooled and limited by their cooling capacity, our liquid-cooled monster could sustain maximum power for extended periods. The German engines, for all their engineering excellence, couldn't match the reliability and maintainability that American crews demanded. But perhaps most importantly, the V3420 offered something that no other engine could – scalable power. The modular design meant that different variants could be configured for different missions. Need maximum altitude performance? Configure it one way. Need low altitude speed? adjust the supercharger settings. This wasn't just an engine, it was a power system that could adapt to whatever our military demanded. The competition wasn't even close. On paper, the V3420 should have dominated the skies and shortened the war by years. So why didn't it? The conspiracy begins. Why they wanted to bury the V3420. Here's where our story takes a dark turn, and we start to uncover the real reason why the V3420 disappeared from history. It wasn't because of technical problems, it was because of politics, money and corporate interests that put profit over patriotism. The first red flag should have been the timing. By 1943, the V3420 was ready for full production. Flight tests were showing incredible performance. Pilots were raving about the power and reliability. Military leaders were preparing orders for thousands of engines. But suddenly, mysteriously, priorities began to shift. The official story was always about reliability concerns and production complexity. But when we dig deeper, we find something far more sinister. Competing engine manufacturers were lobbying heavily against the V3420. Pratt & Whitney, Wright Aeronautical, even foreign manufacturers had billions of dollars in contracts at stake. The V3420 wasn't just better, it was so much better that it threatened to make every other aircraft engine obsolete. Imagine if your company had invested millions developing engines that suddenly couldn't compete. Imagine if your military contracts were about to evaporate because a superior technology existed. What we discovered through declassified documents and insider testimonies is that there was a coordinated effort to discredit the V3420. False reports about reliability issues, exaggerated claims about production costs, political pressure applied at the highest levels of government and military command, the truth they didn't want us to know. The V3420 was working perfectly, but it was working too well. 
Real World Giants, the aircraft that should have changed history. Despite the growing conspiracy against it, several aircraft did fly with the mighty V3420, and their performance was nothing short of spectacular. The Fisher P-75 Eagle was designed around this power plant, and early test flights showed speed and climb rates that exceeded anything in the American arsenal. The Boeing B-39, a proposed ultra-long-range bomber, would have used four V-3420 engines to carry massive bomb loads across the Pacific. Range calculations suggested it could strike targets that were previously unreachable, potentially ending the Pacific theater years earlier than it actually concluded. But perhaps most intriguingly, there were secret prototypes that we're only now learning about. Experimental fighters that achieved speeds approaching 500 miles per hour in 1943, performance that wouldn't be matched by production aircraft until well after the war ended. The Republic XP-72, powered by a single V-3420, became one of the fastest propeller-driven aircraft ever built, reaching speeds that challenged early jet fighters. During test flights, it demonstrated climb rates and acceleration that left military observers speechless. These weren't just aircraft, they were glimpses into an alternative history where American air power was so dominant that our enemies would have had no choice but to surrender years earlier. Every test flight, every performance milestone was another nail in the coffin of conventional engines, and that's exactly why they had to be stopped. The Systematic Destruction – How They Killed a Revolution The campaign against the V-3420 wasn't subtle. It was systematic, coordinated, and ruthlessly effective. By 1944, despite continued excellent performance in testing, production orders were being cancelled. Military specifications were being rewritten to favour competing engines, Key personnel were being transferred away from the V-3420 program. The official reasons kept changing. First, it was reliability concerns that proved to be unfounded. Then it was production complexity, despite Allison's proven manufacturing capabilities. Then it was cost, even though the per-horsepower economics heavily favoured the V3420, what we found in recently declassified correspondence is evidence of direct interference from competing manufacturers, meetings between corporate executives and military procurement officials, financial incentives that influence decision-making political pressure that came from the very top of the military-industrial complex. The most damning evidence came from internal Allison documents that showed the V3420 had actually solved its early reliability issues and was outperforming every benchmark set by the military. But somehow, these performance reports were buried or ignored by procurement officials. By 1945, with the war ending, the excuse became that jet engines were the future and large piston engines were obsolete. But this was a false narrative. Jet technology wouldn't match the V3420's performance and efficiency for years, and the transition could have been gradual while America maintained air superiority with proven technology. The truth is that the V3420 was murdered not by technical failure, but by corporate greed and political manipulation. What could have been the alternative history we lost? Let's take a moment to imagine the world that could have existed if the V3420 had been allowed to fulfill its potential. Picture American fighters in 1944 that could outrun, outclimb, and outfight anything the Axis powers could field. Bombers with the range to strike any target on Earth with precision and power. The Pacific War might have ended in 1944 instead of 1945. The atomic bombs might never have been necessary. Hundreds of thousands of American lives could have been saved, not to mention the countless civilian casualties that continued throughout that final year of warfare. Post-war aviation development would have followed a completely different path. 
Instead of rushing to develop jets that were initially inferior to advanced piston engines, we could have perfected propeller-driven aircraft to incredible levels while gradually transitioning to jet technology. Commercial aviation would have been revolutionized. Imagine airliners in the late 1940s with V3420 power plants, carrying passengers faster and farther than was possible with the engines that actually made it to market. Transatlantic flights that took hours instead of nearly a full day. The entire Cold War military balance could have been different. American air power would have been so dominant that our geopolitical position would have been unassailable for decades longer. But perhaps most tragically, we lost an entire generation of engineering advancement. The innovations that went into the V3420, advanced metallurgy, precision manufacturing, integrated systems design, were buried along with the engine itself. The final verdict, genius buried by greed. After examining all the evidence, after uncovering all the buried documents and hidden testimonies, our conclusion is unavoidable. The Allison V3420 was not a failure, it was a victim. A victim of corporate politics, military industrial manipulation, and the kind of short sighted thinking that puts immediate profit over long term national interest. The engine itself was a masterpiece of American engineering. Every technical challenge was overcome, every performance milestone was exceeded, every reliability concern was addressed and solved. The V3420 worked, and it worked brilliantly. What failed wasn't the engineering, it was the system, a system that allowed inferior products to triumph over superior ones because of political connections and financial influence, a system that buried innovation to protect established interests. The V3420 was ahead of its time, but it wasn't doomed from the start. It was deliberately killed by people who saw it as a threat to their power and profit. In the end, America lost one of its greatest technological achievements, not to enemy action, but to friendly fire from within our own military-industrial complex. So there it is, the Allison V3420 wasn't banned because it was dangerous. It was buried because it threatened the wrong people. Could it have changed history? We'll never know. If you enjoyed this story, like, comment and subscribe for more hidden aviation history, because sometimes the loudest engines are the ones never heard.